Come on, serious suggestions, please. I'm not trying to write a thriller here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? An essay. That means facts and logic. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? The Tataris soon a mystery. When so much remains unexplained, there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, a mysterious person. I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Yes, you came to me. So all the more reason to take my advice. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. Uh, okay, but... Did one of them just mention Tatarasuna? But that's all the way in Inazuma! Is it just Paimon or is it kind of unusual for someone in Sumeru to want to write a paper about that? Uh, everyone here is just going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Guess people here are free to research pretty much anything. Great! Let's go find out what this Tatarasuna mystery is all about. Alright, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. Ugh, if only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about her, this seems like the kind of thing she'd know about. Oh, you're the traveler, you say? Hmm. Hey, what's with that face? Don't believe us? No, no, of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit, I started... Uh... examining the evidence. Sorry. Oh, so what, for the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kinda lacking. Uh, Traveler. I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah, uh, I see. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that, uh... If you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatarasuna. Uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, oh, fair point. In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatarasuna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Apart from the swordmaker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, the records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger, someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatarasuna for a while before disappearing without a trace. And shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Hmm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. 
I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! Stop shouting! This part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. It just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. Wait, so there are two missing people in the story now? That's right! What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Oh, the swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin art and so on? Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So, basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin art. Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, you left out the biggest detail of all. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. Or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most... Get to the point, for Pete's sake. According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. A puppet? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. Uh... <laughs> Uh, how creepy. The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree, it does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look. Oh, and please read my essay draft as well. Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but I think essays should be grounded in facts. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawada's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. Wait, you are allowed to just make stuff up? Pretty sure you've gone from essay to guessay there. Akaba, look. Your teacher has researched this extensively. I've reached out to everyone I could think of. Whatever information we have now is all that there is to know. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Ugh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Give me some time. I need to find a new angle on this. We have some other stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay! Alright, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. Hey, so that thing they were talking about... It has to do with the Balladeer, doesn't it? Okay, then, even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? 
After all, we kicked his butt and got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? If you ask Paimon, Akaba should just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in... Ah! Hey, did you see that? He literally just went by over there. It looked like... like... The Balladeer! No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see! Take it easy. Sure enough, you're here. Hey! What are you doing in the Sanctuary of Sir Astana? Aren't you supposed to be locked up? I know you must have a lot of questions. Uh, please, allow me to explain. It was my idea to set the Balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's gonna do some investigation in Ermansoul for me. A deal? <laughs> you sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumero would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. But if that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was... Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. Well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you. Considering you even struck a deal with a doctor. Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. The Balladeer's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. Wait a second. Former? You mean, he's not a Harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but... It seems as if the Doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... Sometimes it's you using them, other times it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui, and also between each of the Harbingers. So as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. <laughs> well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings, and you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear, don't you? And they're your friends, so I guess you'll be siding with them. Yeah, obviously! Nahida, don't listen to him! 
him. Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. All right. Then I'll do what we agreed. Good. Go now, and keep in touch. Nihira, are you... Are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. Yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin's soul. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Ermensoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information in Ermensoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermensoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information, and should be able to find it more quickly. Exactly! Or... what if... You... Paima just doesn't trust him! He's treated us as enemies every time we've run into him! I understand. But sometimes, everything is dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. And Traveler, I know what your heart desires most of all. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark, searching for the one candle whose light still burns. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm... I'm still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. <laughs> Seems like we have a telepathic connection. In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Ermansoul from the outside. Great, thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Ermansoul. Wow! It looks pretty different here compared to last time. The colors are gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Shut your beak, Jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards. But right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. I need to be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. 
I know there are many grievances between you, on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. Fine, let's call it truce, but only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are going to be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. If there are no further objections, I suggest we get going. Or did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? Ew! Ugh, the snark on this guy! It's unbearable! <sighs> we can start now. Ermansol access grid. Initiating connection procedure. Is this a small sapling? Up with him. Wow. So this is the inside of Ermansol. Ooh. Paimon's never seen anything like this. And it feels like a sacred place. Ermansol is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. Why is it that Paimon just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Ermansol. Can you still sense where the heart of Ermansol is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. Stay close. Don't go running off. Hey, so go running off in here. What would happen? <laughs> what, what are you smirking at? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is to stick close to me. have spread out. Those are all packets of information from inside Ermansol. Be careful not to touch them. There's a time and a place to lie, but this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? We're here. What a huge tree! Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. Are you ready? Ready when you are. Then please begin. Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The Balladeer's actually doing what Nahida tells him. Guess he must want to stay alive. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. Traveler, Paimon, 
Would you like to talk? Yes. I've also invited Paimon to join. Huh? What the? We can talk to each other inside our heads? <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. Paimon's never tried this before. This is great! So, Paimon's been wanting to ask you something. Don't you think the Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction? He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. Well done. Smart and attentive as always. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Well, it's true. Betrayal turned the Paladir into the person he is today. Huh. Paimon thought nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. Everyone has a history, Paimon. Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on, yes. I know about all of that. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. Oh? How interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. So the guess they got it right? Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatarasuna was sabotaged. Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. Uh, what makes you think we're talking to each other? <laughs> Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermensoul at all. Wait! How did you know about that? Didn't Nahida tell you? It's not like we've never met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Huh? Wait. This light. It looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Hey, don't you forget the agreement. You have to share it with us. Shh. Just wait. Mr. Niwa, are you certain this is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara Suna's furnace, after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the furnace. It has to be me. Is that so? <sighs> well, since you insist. <gasps> it's... I have been in Tatarasuna for some time now. 
You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Under your leadership, Tatarasuna is a warm, welcoming place, like a giant village. People are gainfully employed, their lives have purpose, they are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatarasuna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. The forging industry with Crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, others unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Even now, you remain one of Tatarasuna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. <laughs> you flatter me. From the outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma, and it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So you say, Escher. But is this really the truth? My good sir, what do you mean? I tried to resist thinking it was all connected, because I didn't want to speculate, and I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke? Mounting production problems? Worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still, I suspect you understand it better than I do. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with Shogun. This is our last hope. But that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? <sighs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. <sighs> Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio, the yokai struck down by the Shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. <laughs> You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. I'm in charge here. And I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside. Probably to my death. But what about you? What are you still doing here? Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. Drop the act! We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatarasuna has worked. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? Don't you have all your answers by now? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. 
A moment like this, where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. <sighs> you... You... <sighs> You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well, at least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias, and that I was not from Fontaine at all. And yet, despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity, and what I seek in Tatarasuna. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? <clears throat> if you kill me, there's no one who can get inside the furnace. So you're really going to destroy this place? Is that it? Oh, but you're quite wrong. There is one other person. Mm, some may not see him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. You're just missing a heart. <gasps> Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But... This makes no sense. What are you really trying to accomplish by all this? Why go to all this trouble? It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. I'm a Fatui Harbinger. Call me... The Doctor. The... Fatui? Who... What do you want? Just to create a... minor inconvenience for your nation. That's it? That's why you... gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the Crystal Marrow? <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, even without you, that pure, innocent puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? <coughs> if you give him my heart, tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. He has nothing to prove to anyone. Because not everyone just wants to use other people. The only ones who think like that are people like you. What a beautiful way to see the world. It almost makes me feel a little guilty. Hmm. Then out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. I say, Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa? Already dead. What a pity. <sighs> 
Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> what fun it was. I'd like to introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not, let's turn him to dust. Hey, are you all right? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore! <laughs> Good. Good. Was that... the doctor? Did he turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? But why did we see things from his perspective? When I touched the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments, I read this memory in his mind. You have to admit, it must be the truth. Maybe so, but it means nothing. Does it? But this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you. He never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace. You know very well what that means. Even more so than I. Hmm. Give him some space. He looks really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. We need to give him some time to process his emotions. Paimon's still confused about the Tatarasuna incident. So, the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as a mechanic from Fontaine. And that's when the trouble began. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. Of all the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Niwa's heart into the device and handed it to the balladeer. Then he instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. The load was far beyond what he expected, but the balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Niwa fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The balladeer was stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing, but it has protected him from the filth. He thought Niwa had completely betrayed him, and yet this very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the balladeer threw the heart to the ground and left Tatarasuna without looking back. Holy moly! So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible! Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. Tatori, you brazen face! <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him! Psh, 
Shall we see how he's doing? Hey, you all right? <laughs> That's a scary expression. Are you worried about me? If we didn't have such a history, I'd almost think that qualifies me to be your friend. It won't. I'll keep my end of the deal. Hmm. Hey, aren't you investigating the stuff we want to know about? That's why we're here. But unfortunately, there's no information about the Descenders in Ermansoul. Even if you can't find anything, that seems to confirm it. Ermansoul does not keep records on the Descenders. Anyone who comes from beyond this world is not counted as part of Tavat. Oh, does that mean we have to leave empty-handed? Don't thank me just yet. Hmm, you look really upset. <laughs> well, since Ermin's soul was a dead end, I guess I can share some other info that might interest you. Huh? About what? The reason why there are records about your brother in Ermin's soul. It might have something to do with Conria. Apparently, Conria was his first destination when he arrived in this world. Plus, he only came to this world because the heavens responded to the summoning. The heavens responded? The jester told me this himself. You can take his word on this. He was a royal mage in Conria and lived with your brother for a time. I don't know the details. It's up to you whether you want to believe me. All I can say is, I wouldn't lie to you about this. Did you get all that, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes. Astonishing news. Does this info count towards my mission? It wasn't for Mermansoul, but was it valuable? Very valuable. Good. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Lesser Lord Kusanali was right. My power's all but completely spent. Even if I use all of the divine power left in me, I can't sustain this shield for very long. I shared a secret with you, and now you owe me. So in return, I'd like you to answer a question for me. Give me your hand. Can you hear my voice inside your head? No, I can't do anything like that anymore. At most, all I can do is exchange a few words with you. So tell me, in this world, is it possible to change the past? Done. Huh? What the? What happened? I not only saw you hold hands for a second! Nothing. I was just thanking her for helping me. So long. I suggest you get yourselves out of here quickly. Reaction time, but I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. From this day forth, the names Baladir and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Those who died in Tatarasuna because of me deserve another chance at life. Hey, Baladir, don't do anything stupid! You know, I never did like insects. Hordes of the puny things swarming together can be a real nuisance and I enjoy nothing more than to stamp them out like the pests they are. But if a colony of harmless ants isn't threatening anyone, I guess they deserve to be left alone. Luckily, everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for all. Baladir! Baladir! Uh-oh, he disappeared! Come on, we gotta find him somehow! Just now, 
I was suddenly cut off by some kind of power. It was the Balladeer's fault! He... he shut you out! I didn't think he'd be capable of something like that with so little power left. Did he keep some of his power hidden when he was defeated? Or... Did he achieve something beyond his abilities, and it took everything he had? Where the heck did he go? Oh, it's all our fault. We were supposed to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Nahida. Don't be. It's not your fault. Please, let me handle this from here. Even though I'm not sure I can solve it. We're running out of time. Follow my lead and get out of Ermansoul as soon as possible. We're out! And we're at... Uh... An inn or something? This is an emergency. I'll have to ask you to stay here for now. Everything's arranged. And nobody will disturb you. I'm sorry, but this isn't something I need your help with. Leave this one to me. An emergency? How bad is it? Nahida, will you be okay? Don't worry. If my assessment is correct, though there may be some minor disturbances, it won't lead to a disaster. Please rest and recover your strength here until I say it's safe. Her voice is gone. Paimon can't shake the feeling that something really big has happened. What do you think the Balladeer meant? And why did he suddenly grab onto you before? He wants to change the past? But... Surely, that's impossible! Right! You can't just rewrite history! All that stuff happened already in real life! It's like... Um... Imagine Paimon drank all the water in this inn! Even if no one was there to see it, Paimon would sure as heck remember drinking it! Hmm... So... Why does Paimon still have a bad feeling about this? Paimon can't help but feel scared about what he might do! Oh, Paimon's so confused. Huh? Ah! Sorry, Paimon accidentally... Oh. Oh. It's the Balladeer's fault for causing Paimon all this mental stress. But erasing yourself from history? It's unthinkable. Is that really possible in Ermansoul? Uh-oh. Paimon's head is overheating from trying to understand what he's up to. And it's still not working. Ugh. Paimon's had it with that little brat. He's been nothing but trouble ever since we met him. There's no way he'll actually succeed, right? Otherwise, won't everyone who's connected to him be affected too? There's nothing we can do about it at this point. Hey, have you got any ideas on what we should do next? Seems like now there's nothing left for us to do but to go to sleep. But Paimon's still so worried. Paimon won't be able to sleep a wink tonight. So, how about... Uh... We list all our favorite foods to take our mind off things. Heck, if that doesn't work, Paimon's probably going to collapse of anxiety here. All right, Paimon will start. First dish. Hmm. Munstack grilled fish. Oh, and chicken mushroom skewers. Tea break pancakes, cream stew, sautéed matsutake, and drained chili chicken, almond tofu, satisfying salad. Oh, oh, also, Adeptus Temptation, Golden Shrimp Balls, Triple Layered Consomme, Lotus Seed and Bird Egg Soup, and... and... Um... Um... Doing just now? Paimon was... 
talking? Huh. Paimon suddenly can't remember what she was talking about. What was it again? Hmm? The balladeer? Is that a food too? Huh. Weird name though. What's wrong? Your eyes are like saucers. Was it something Paimon said? So, the balladeer. Is that someone's name? Cause it sounds like a nickname or something. Hmm? Okay, sure! Where are we going? Huh? Fine by Paimon, but... Is everything okay? You're acting like this is an emergency. It's been a while. Of course. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> now there's a question I wasn't expecting. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you what I know once more. The once renowned Raiden Gokuden, comprised of five branches Aminoma, Futsu, Ishin, Hyakume, and Senju. The art of forging practiced by these five clans was first taught to them personally by the almighty Shogun. Over time, the five branches diverged from one another as generations of bladesmiths honed and perfected their craft until they became five distinct traditions. Most of the great swordsmith clans of old have since fallen into decline, and for a long time, only the Amenoma branch kept its heart alive. But fortunately, Kaedahara Kazuha recently returned to Inazuma and took up the mantle of the Ishin art. Now, two clans remain of the original Gokuden Five. If my memory serves me right, you yourself were present when he forged the Ishin blade. Oh, yeah, we were! Paima remembers that now! We learned a bit about the decline of the Raiden Gokuden then, too. It seems like such a shame. <sighs> that, my friends, is a tragic tale indeed. In fact, this was not made known to me for most of my life. All these years, I knew of those great clans' demise, but never the cause. <sighs> Only recently, when the question was on my mind, did I ask Kaedehara Kazuha about this? He told me that, as we are both heirs to a branch of the Raiden Gokunen, it was right that I should know the truth. There is no harm in telling you, but I must warn you. It is a dark and sorrowful tale. The Raiden Gokunen were the targets of a murderous rampage by a vengeful bladesmith. Vengeful? Why? Four hundred years ago, so I'm told, there was a catastrophic malfunction in Tatarasuna's furnace. One brave swordsmith heard the commotion and chose not to flee, but he rushed to the scene, hoping to prevent a disaster. Tatarasuna was home to a state-of-the-art forging and smelting operation in that day, and overseeing it was the armory officer. His surname was Niwa, though he had family ties to the Kaedehara clan. Knowing that they had just one chance to save countless lives, Mr. Niwa and the swordsmith leaped together into the furnace. The furnace quickly stabilized, but neither of them made it out. The smith's death, though heroic, dealt a devastating blow to his family's fortunes. 
His orphan son was left to fend for himself and grew up deeply resentful at the world. In his heart, the whole of Inazuma was culpable in his tragedy. He hated the almighty Shogun for her apparent indifference towards his father's death, and he hated everyone who had done nothing to try and save him. Powerless and destitute, the only legacy he had to pass on to his children was his hatred. Generation after generation bore this grudge, living in utter misery. Alas, if only the story could have ended there. But 100 years ago, the then head of this family reached the end of his wits. He could bear their fate no longer, and yet he could do nothing to change it. Finally, he made a drastic decision to take revenge on the ride in Gokuten. In doing so, he sought to vent his pet anger and shake the very foundations of Inazuma's forging industry. In his fury, he murdered indiscriminately, killing even bladesmiths from the Hyakume clan which he belonged to. His goal was absolute, the devastation of all of the Raiden Gokuden. But when he came to the Kaedehara and Kamisato clans, his killing spree came to an abrupt end. He failed to catch them unawares. They fought back fiercely, and they did not spare his life. That is why the Kaedehara clan and their Ishin art survived that day. <sighs> I suppose they were the lucky ones, under the dire circumstances. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Kazuha? Why, yes. Just yesterday, in fact. We spoke for a while over some tea. He seemed well. My pleasure. Don't tell Paimon. There are other places you want to visit too, right? <laughs> Your expression says it all. You can't hide anything from Paimon. On to the next stop. Lead the way, traveler. Paimon will be right we're here! Um, this is the Yashiro Commission's headquarters, so... Traveler, it's been a while. If you're looking for the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Are they out on business? The Commissioner is out on business, and Miss Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the Commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? Shall we go in? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. We'll be heading in then. Thanks! Hmm? Hello, dears. Is there something you want to say? <laughs> of course, Traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the Commissioner's behalf. As for the Commissioner himself, well, you know, busy as ever, that much hasn't changed. Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. So pretty much business as usual in the Yashiro Commission, huh? Very much so. Well, got any more questions? You're very welcome. In fact, 
fact, I would love nothing more than for you to come and visit more often. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. She seems so thrilled to have you as a friend. And she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So, you're not just Miss Kamisato's knight in shining armor, you know. You're a hero to us all. Oh, I mean it. Whenever the commissioner dines at home, Toma always joins him. I always find myself at my most relaxed when I'm serving the two of them and listening to them chat away. The commissioner has such a busy schedule that he doesn't always have the chance to take his meals at home. But given the opportunity, he always prefers to dine here. They say it's because Toma's a much better chef than most. <laughs> oh, the commissioner is so fond of home comforts. They get to talking about you sometimes too, you know. Always with a very fond tone. The way one would talk about dear old friends around whom one can truly be themselves. Miss Kamisato occasionally joins them as well. Whenever the whole family gets together and they start talking about people they've met and experiences they've had, you always get a mention. It's been many years now since the late Mr. and Mrs. Kamisato passed away. Much has happened in the Kamisato clan in that time. As someone who is old and gray enough to have watched their son and daughter grow up, it makes me so happy to see them meet a dependable friend whose company they enjoy so much. So... In the future, if you ever do have the time, please know you are always very welcome at the Yashiro Commission Headquarters. There will always be at least one old lady who would be delighted to have the pleasure of your company. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Haima likes it here too. Also, you were saying something about the food here being really great. Paimon's itching to try it. We may just have to invite ourselves around for dinner sometime. Uh, uh, Paimon meant we should come pay a visit again real soon. Ideally around dinner time. <laughs> of course. You're always welcome. All right, goodbye for now. We're, uh... Where are we going next? Great! Goodbye, man! All right, then. Take care now. Hope to see you soon. Oh, are you two leaving already? Yep, everything's taken care of now. Don't worry. Very well. Safe travels. Goodbye. Do my eyes deceive me, or is that the Traveler and Paimon? Xavier, what are you doing here? I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So what about you two? We have some questions and thought you might be able to help. 
certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. Like the back of my hand? <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story, don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. I'm told that its history is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation, goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A couple? When exactly? One was just in the last few years, the other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. They say he was a mechanic who consulted on a technology upgrade. It seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations goes back a long way. How about that? Hey, weren't you gonna ask Xavier something about Tatarasuna? Come on, ask already! Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither. Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Hmm? What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Sure, go ahead. A kabuki mono? Hmm, no, I can't say that I have. I do know the word, Inazuman for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a kabuki mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. Of course! Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier! Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. Farewell. Looks like you got all the information you're looking for. Sure, but what's up with you today? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Keep your smile, Spinal Crocodile. No matter what happens, Paimon will always be there for you. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> All right, let's head off and go meet Nahida. Take it easy. Hey, it's them. Akaba, Sawada, you're still here? Indeed we are. If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. We have time. What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatarasuna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. I presume you'll want to read mine as well. Here.
Well, what do you think? Hey, Traveler, remember how last time Akaba was saying how he wished he could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma. So how about we tell them what we learned? What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Wow. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. And they're back at it. These guys are really into this. Oh, so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. Quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermin's soul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. So, you believe this person really existed? And we just don't remember him because... Well... Because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about her in Ermensoul. And it also explains why any changes to Ermensoul wouldn't affect her. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's... Quite incredible when you think about it. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? 
I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Once the Balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And if he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The Balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the Doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Soul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Soul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but... It still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but... It seems like he got nothing in return. Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm... Found it. This should be the one. It turns out that... I have a strange way of confirming everything she has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Is this... a fairy tale? Who wrote it? I authored this record myself. Huh? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the Balladeer? When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hold on. So this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew she'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one she told us. The now erased life of the Balladeer. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity. Yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. 
Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this? The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. We solved it! I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The Balladeer agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders, and although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail that Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend, but the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. 
Yeah, Mahira's right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take her out for a walk to clear her head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Let's go get a snack for one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! That'll be sure to lift our spirits! It must be with... Take it easy. Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Hey! Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsetias and ran off. Look. If you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? Work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look. We're all out of Sunsetias, and I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. I'll leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. We can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey, what do we do now? Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you.
Yeah, this'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Isn't that a bit too cruel? Oh, all right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? Ha! He spotted us! You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. Ah, have we met before? No, we haven't met. But you know me? I have no recollection. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? <gasps> you were right! The look on his face! I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes, I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm, and he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? Then let's return to the city. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world, like you had nowhere to be and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. But I don't... No, you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. Hello. 
I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything. <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful walk. You say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. But these two claim that they know me, and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a previous incarnation. Oh, like a past life or something? Yes, something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Okay, I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? Um... Uh... Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear, but I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did, and many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go, or you'll never be happy. I gave everything I had, but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place in time, a chain of cause and effect, a cycle of karma and consequence. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but... Yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Please, I want to see them for myself. I want to experience my own transgressions. Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet, with no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to, to fill the void within me, except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Very well. As you wish. Wait, shouldn't we go with him? This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Good point. Given your, um, unique situation, we 
better keep an eye on you. Understood. <sighs> Thank you. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. This looks like Inazuma. Right now, you're in a dream I created using information extracted from your memories. These memories will show you the raw truth. But be aware that enemies may react just like in the real world. Please be careful. Sounds like an immersive experience. It's a good thing we came along. You don't need to do this for me. I don't deserve your protection. We never give up halfway. Well, we had to once, but... That was your doing. All right. Thanks. Wanderer, this is the Shake Pavilion. In your Baladir incarnation, this is where the Electro Archon placed you after your creation. You had a great many memories here. Is that because this is kind of like his birthplace? You could say that, in a sense. You'll see why shortly. I hear footsteps. This place is huge. I can't believe the landslide didn't fill it in. I wonder who built it. The Crystal Marrow Miners? No, there's no way. Look at this exquisite construction work, and so well preserved, too. No mining crew would be capable of this. Hmm? There's someone passed out on the ground. <sighs> who are you? Y you're awake. What happened? How'd you get stuck here? Are you injured? Uh-huh. Not a scratch. And these fine clothes. Who are you? This man is Katsuragi, deputy to Torichiyo's adopted son, Bikoshi Nagamasa. He found the Baladir in Shake Pavilion and took him back to Tatarasuna. And the rest is history. Well, it used to be. In the original version of events, Katsuragi was ultimately killed by Nagamasa. Let me get you out of here. Our people are nearby. H hang in there. During the Tatarasuna incident, Niwa was murdered by the doctor, disguised as a mechanic. The Baladir, then known as the Kabukimono, disappeared not long after. As the second-in-command at Tatarasuna, responsibility for what had happened fell to Mikoshi Nagamasa. But Katsuragi had sworn lifelong loyalty to Nagamasa after the latter had once saved his life. At Katsuragi's insistence, Nagamasa killed him to put an end to the Tatarasuna incident. <sighs> Katsuragi seems like he was a good guy. He looks like a warrior, but he has a kind face. Why couldn't he live a long and happy life? Nagamasa, I found this young guy in a cave sealed off by a landslide. He doesn't remember his name. Well, we need to call you something. I hear the workers are calling you the Kabukimono. Hmm, that's fine with me. Katsuragi, report to Niwa. Tell him we have someone new joining us. Abandoned, like you. 
I lived here for a while at first, but there's nothing for us here. We can't stay. Okay. I heard my mom and dad used to make swords, but the factory manager died, and then my dad got sick. <coughs> he kept coughing all the time, just like me. Then mom started coughing too. But you can't. You promised me. Yup. We're family now. We're gonna be together forever and ever. This child didn't have a name. Or rather, the balladeer didn't know what to call him. His father died before he could name him. After his mother died, the child stayed in their straw hut alone. Some of the neighbors helped to raise him. After leaving Tatarasuna, the balladeer ran into this child who didn't have a name, just like him. They made a promise to live together. What happened to the child then? He died from his illness while he was still very young. The balladeer came home one day and found that he had stopped breathing. Hey! What's wrong? Say something! You promised me we could be family! You're no different from Niwa and all the others. You betrayed me too. <laughs> the voices have gone. It looks like the memory ends here. Let's keep going. You do realize you're blocking my path. I come not to obstruct you. I've been waiting. What you are truly is a weapon. One that can wield it with an iron will. Or you will continue to drift aimlessly. Are you trying to win me over? A long-fated rebellion has begun. Why not take your place at the banquet and join those who shall feast? This place is dark. Ugh. Paimon knows this place. It's the Delusion Factory in Inazuma. In the original version of events, the Traveler once encountered the Balladeer here. Such a creepy atmosphere, and so familiar. Hey, look over there! Well, well, my fair lady. Is this rundown factory and these incompetent fools all for me? Wow, you shouldn't have. Huh. <laughs> what do you have to gain from belittling your subordinates? You might not want to admit it, but you are a part of this plan. Perhaps you find fighting in the Abyss to be a more meaningful use of your time? Oh, but of course, even this pales in comparison to being experimented on by the Doctor. <laughs> what a sharp tongue you have. Funny how negotiating never seems to be your strong suit. For the task ahead, I suggest you keep your true feelings to yourself. Hm. Save your breath. I know what I have to do. I'm sure you think so, but I still think you need to hear it. Don't start thinking you're invincible, and don't let your emotions get in the way. Surely you're not worried about me. I just can't have you getting in my way. You and Child never fail to find ways to complicate things. I'm merely lighting a little fire in this chaotic nation. But you, being tossed out like trash, must make you want to destroy it completely. Do you remember the last time you were here? That was a lot of swordsmiths you killed. I'm sure the descendants of the ride in Gokaden are still suffering the consequences now. Look at you. Oh, don't get so sentimental. 
Now, give that poor little tongue of yours a rest and stop pretending like you're above everyone else. Bye then. See you at the victory feast. Poor little tongue? <laughs> She's playing with fire talking to me like that. Who does she think she is? <sighs> Forget it. Someone might find me here any minute now. I should prepare to give them a warm welcome. <sighs> the plot does not end here. There is more of this story to come. Wanderer, are you able to continue? Yes. Please don't worry about me. Why are you staring at me in silence? Can't you think of a nicer way to express yourself? I'm under no obligation to be nice to you. Besides, I thought nothing mattered to you except results in your own interests. Isn't that right, witch? <laughs> Muddle-headed puppet. You're only number six because you can take more abuse than other humans. Do you really count that as an asset? You're a... Looks like we've arrived in Sumeru. Uh... Is that...? Considering that Amorta's sage, Nafis, refused to join this project, I'll take part in the experiment in his place. Welcome. I look forward to a fruitful collaboration. <sighs> when do we start? You seem impatient. You should know that becoming a god is far from a trivial affair. The biological transformation is a lengthy process. As such, I too would recommend that we commence as soon as possible. In the event that a successful connection is established, his body will become permanently bound to the machine, and he will be unable to move independently of it. Nothing worse than what I've been through before then, Doctor. You were the most resilient test subject I ever came across. Thanks to you, I was able to garner a great deal of information. Alas, after that, you were under orders to remain in the abyss. We barely saw each other, and it became difficult to further refine the knowledge I had gained. That was gracefully worded. Ever wonder what they think if they knew that nothing matters to you, apart from your crazy experiments? I suggest you speak to me in a more respectful tone, Scaramouche. The mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. The doctor again? <sighs> that was uncomfortable to watch. That person gives off a very sinister energy. It's normal for him to give you the creeps. He scares the bejeebers out of Paimon. <sighs> Let's move on. You're a god. Do you think I'm evil? If you accept that he is you, just as you are you, then yes, you are evil. In your eyes, are there any differences between humans and puppets? Do you think there are any differences between your present self and your previous and future incarnations? If not, then what are the differences between humans and puppets? Whoever has tasted the joys and sorrows of life in the human realm is human. Whoever has loved and lost, cried with grief, howled with rage at the tragedy of death that eclipses the miracle of life, they are human too. <sighs> I've seen enough of my past. If possible, I'd like to reclaim the sins that are mine to bear. No matter the consequences, I won't run from blame or punishment. Whatever I am due, let it come to pass. Can you return my memories to me? Huh? But won't that mean you'll lose your current identity? I've always believed that human lives follow a set of rules, with each person being a collection of past experiences. 
as a puppet living in a human world, my life is subject to the same rules. Regaining your memories means reverting completely to your previous incarnation. All the emotions that you discarded will return to you. Are you sure you want to do this? I've lived with the void in my chest my whole life. My creator didn't need me. And ever since I awoke, I've just drifted from one place to the next. But then I met you. And I finally realized that reclaiming my missing sins might be my one opportunity to become my true self. I've always felt I have an innate tendency to yearn for something more, in a way that goes deeper than for most people. But for all my soul searching as a Shugenja, I've never fully understood it. Looking at it now, it seems that I brought this curse upon myself. So I beg you, grant me this opportunity to gain a purpose, to change my destiny, and end my wandering. Very well. Since your mind is made up, I will return to you that which is yours. You have made your decision. Now, take this. Set him free. A puppet? What's he doing here? It's... You're a human as far as I'm concerned. Everyone's here. Wonderful. What a fine blade. Nagamasa will be thrilled. This is... my... Dross will be purged. That's why this won't be the end. Let's 
Squam Fury! Insignificant pest! Behold! My endless cycle begins! Quit falling! Too slow! Squam Fury! Sure. The wind rises. Insignificant pest. Imbecile, get out of my sight. Did we win? What did you expect? I'd never lose to that. <sighs> There's that tone of voice again. You're definitely back to your old self. Wait, but it was you inside that thing too. What have you got to be smug about? Sorry. I'm harsh on myself and everyone else. Just the way I am. <laughs> you sound like you're concerned about me. But don't worry. Thanks to you, even if I didn't change a thing, at least I now know the truth. The memory recovery seems to have been a success. This dream has served its purpose. Come on. Let's continue this outside. Welcome back, Traveler, Paimon, Balladeer. <sighs> It feels like we just went on a really long journey. Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> you don't like being addressed by that name? It's fine. But I was just thinking, I should probably change it. After learning about everything the doctor did, there's no way I can carry on using a name connected to him. I'm not planning on returning to the Fatui. And they wouldn't take me back anyway. Recent events will have affected a lot of people, and they might not even remember who the Sixth is. So, you're quitting the Fatui for good? <sighs> it's like you said, Lesser Lord Kusanali. Everything may look futile, but it wasn't completely meaningless. At least I made a lot of people forget about me. But that doesn't mean your own past has disappeared. Of course. And your main goal, for which you gave up everything you had, you weren't able to achieve it. I hope you can see and understand that. Changing the world, changing the past, changing the fates of other people, these are not simple things to accomplish. What you are looking for is complete annihilation. But this is just a fantasy. Even if the Balladeer is removed from existence, the world will not heed your will. Indeed. <laughs> How ridiculous. Do you regret doing all that when you've gotten so little in return? Even if I'm completely worthless, there's nothing in the world worth regretting. Lesser Lord Kusanali, you purposely left that information in Nermansol, didn't you? Yes. And I took pains to make sure that you'd acquire that information naturally. Why would you go to such lengths? You trying to win me over too? In all honesty, your past experiences have made you a useful asset to Sumeru and to me. Winning you over was indeed a part of my plan. But before that, I wanted to tell you the truth about your past. If all I wanted to do was use you, then I'd be no different from the doctor. Very clever. I guess you could say that's one of my virtues. Utility to others is what gives me worth. So if embracing my sins is what it takes to make me useful again, so be it. Oh right, I almost forgot. You're the good guys. You're into justice and all that. Sorry if I have a slightly different perspective on things, but I don't feel like I've been duped. 
the wisest leaders are fated to end up with the best helpers. I can live with that. I'm glad you're able to think of it in that way. Traveler, in the future, I'll continue to search Ermin's soul more deeply and see what secrets can be uncovered. Including the beginning of your twin's journey recorded in Ermin's soul. What exactly happened before and after that point? I want to know as well. I will try. Traveler. After I dove into the information torrent in Ermin's soul, why did you go to Inazuma? So that's how you found out whose fate had changed. And how? Well, whatever your reasons, you did me a favor. And I'll do everything I can to pay it back. Borrowing and returning are the only real relationships between individuals. I'll balance the books one day. Don't you worry. That's not true. A relationship between two people is not simply a ledger that can be reset to zero. I think deep down you realize this. People who show up in your life don't just evaporate like water drops and leave nothing behind. There is no such thing as balancing the books. Some things in this world can never be brought back, and they can never be changed, which is why there is emotion in the human world. Everything that you feel is real and lasting, and whatever is missing in you will not be made whole. To be human is to live with imperfections, you can choose whether or not you want to be human. Hmm. But humans can't live without a heart, can they? Anyway, I gave up trying to become a human a long time ago. You understand what pain is perfectly well, even without a heart. You're just bearing your feelings. The past is set in stone, but you can keep moving on. And the longer your future lasts, the shorter your past will become, until one day, it is but a tiny fraction of your life. It sounds like you've got a future planned out for me. Everything's ended up being pretty darn complicated. Paimon doesn't even know where to start, but... The most important thing now is that you need to follow Nahida. Otherwise, all our efforts will have been for nothing! Then I guess I'll be helping you from behind the scenes from now on. I'm glad that you've accepted our proposal. Why don't you choose a new name to celebrate? Ooh, ooh, ooh! Paima wants to pick an ugly nickname for you, too! Why? Because... Because... Paima still doesn't like you that much! <laughs> then I hope we don't see much of each other in the future. A name is life's first gift. You didn't say it out loud, but I know that's what you're thinking. <sighs> the Traveler and Paimon have helped you a lot. If you can't decide on a new name, maybe you can ask them for ideas. No! Paimon only does nicknames! If it's a serious name you're after, it's all yours. <sighs> uh, have you got anything? for these names anymore. Okay. Uh, have you got anything? Are you sure? Oh, all right, if you say so. There, now you have a name of your own. What about a nickname? Are you done yet? Uh, I, still thinking, stop rushing me. Take your time. I don't need to see you again until you've thought of one. Everyone who manipulated me and made me suffer 
will have to pay the price. You mean the Fitui? The doctor, at least. Now that your stance has changed, I believe your future path will change accordingly. But it won't be immediate. You still need some time to compose yourself. Hmm. One more thing. There are still some descendants of the Raiden Gokuden living in Inazuma. Some of them know. Well, they ought to know about the connection between Raiden Gokuden and myself. I don't plan to leave Sumeru for the time being. If you see them in Inazuma, please tell them that I was the one responsible for the Raiden Gokuden's downfall. Even though the events have been erased from the world, they still deserve to know the truth. I see. That is up to you. Huh? But if we do that, then... It's fine. Let them stab their blades into my chest if they so desire. Maybe that's how it always should have been. <laughs> no nonsense. I like it. All right. Let's call it a day. Goodbye, wise deity. And you too. He's gone. What he went through today would have been like living an entire lifetime in an instant. He'll need some time to calm down. Yeah, true. But even so, after everything that's happened, he doesn't seem quite as fierce anymore. So we can finally go eat? Paimon is starving. Thank you both. I hope you will find somewhere nice to go and relax for a while. I've got it! I can end my novel with some words from Mikoshi Nagamasa. You mean because everyone else in the story is dead? Yeah! I heard that Mikoshi Nagamasa died at a ripe old age. He's the perfect fit to be the narrator of the epilogue. The dark clouds had dissipated, but they continue to cast their shadow in Mikoshi Nagamasa's mind for decades to come. Then, one night, as an old man, he had a dream on the night when that prized blade, the Daitatara Nagamasa, was forged, the people rejoiced, and there was painting, dancing, and drinking. All these expressions of joy melted down in the furnace fire and turned into red clouds that rallied around the final sunrise that Mikoshi Nagamasa saw in his lifetime. Life is a story too long to be told, a journey that you must walk to behold. <laughs> comes rushing back. Wow, great! Huh? Look at the vase! Did someone break it while they were cleaning the room or something? But Paimon doesn't remember there being a cleaner. You sound lost and confused. I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Huh? Is there someone here talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance. But for anyone else... <sighs> Who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate, like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, 
the result is still a broken vase, is it not? Uh, who are you? How do you know about all this? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. The voice has disappeared. And who the heck was that? And what were they doing coming out of nowhere and saying all that scary stuff? Ugh. <sighs> anyway... That face is still lying there broken on the ground. Should Paimon go get someone to clean it up? It feels wrong just leaving it there. Just a moment, Paimon will be right back. <laughs> 